Okay, let's see about these cabinets. So I got the two cabinets. They're, they were primed yesterday. They're ready to sand. It's going to take a good bit to get these sanded and ready to paint. I hope to get them ready and painted today. It might just be a case where I get them ready. I don't know. I mean, you know, I just, I mean, it's a lot of work for one person and that's okay. But um, I'll get them going and I'll tell you what my, my game plan is. Now, my game plan is always subject to change, but just in theory, this is what I would like to do. So I would like for my authentic build, my original style build, to be as kind of correct as possible within reason. I don't want to do low quality work because sometimes that's what you're talking about when you're talking about a total factory copy. It's just, you know, it's just factory work. So, yeah, I mean, it's technically that's just how they did it, but it, it, it's not really good work. It's just factory work. But I would like to bridge the gap somewhere in between the, t the type of work I like to do and the type of work you would probably see on a more authentic build. So what we'll do on this one in theory is I picked out of the two cabinets, I, I knew this yesterday when I was priming them, out of the two cabinets I picked the cabinet that I felt like I could do like what we would consider a factory overspray look where they just kind of paint somewhat down the wall but not all the way down the wall and then I picked the cabinet that would be best painted all the way down the walls. Now my preference is always going to be all the way down the walls for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, there are many games that were built in the years of the WPC in WPC 95 era that are painted all the way down the walls. There, there are many that aren't, but there are many that are painted all the way down the walls. Some of them even get to a point where they have overspray onto the floor. Um, so that's one reason I, I I do that is there's a consistency there and uh, the other reason I like to do it is it really just looks better it's just more it's cleaner it makes more sense it's it, it allows you to hide any flaws in the plywood because this plywood typically a good cabinet builder is going to put the worst face of the plywood inside the cabinet so you know they're going to look at both sides of the plywood and say okay this is the one with all the wood cores and all the crap I'm going to put this on the inside and then as a result of that you're going to want to paint over all that so it looks nice when you open it up so i evaluated both of these cabinets this is the one that had the nicest interior pl natural plywood so this will be the one that will be best suited for that factory overspray more authentic look uh, the other thing about it though that's really important to know is primer selection so if I know that I use, I typically use this colored primer that you would call buff. It's buff, it's kind of like this natural tannish yellow primer. This is my preferred shade of primer anyway. I don't care what I'm doing, I don't care what I'm working on, I like this. This is what I like because I can see my guide coat really well. You know, just generic gray which we see in primer so often and even some of what we would call like value shades. Value shades would be things where you can lighten them and darken them to, to better suit towards the color that you'll be putting over top of it because when you're trying to cover primer it's not so much about people think it's about color. It's like oh well I gotta paint this thing yellow so I need a yellow primer. I gotta paint this thing uh, blue so I need a blue primer. That's not really quite how that works. What really works better is shades. So you have a light shade, you have dark shades, and they graduate, graduate, graduate up until you get to very dark shades. You know, and you kind of a little bit maybe you're splitting hairs, but that's what will really lead you to better color coverage. You get into all that, but I don't need to. The reason I need to to talk about the primer selection and color so much, and the preference for it is because in this instance, where I am trying to do a natural look on the inside, this buff color, despite the the guide coat that's on there that will be sanded off, this buff color blends into the natural wood so well that if I don't, it blends in so well that if I don't fully cover it, you won't be able to tell. So therefore, I won't be chasing this primer all the way down the sidewalls only to ultimately paint the entire inside of the, the cabinet and defeat the purpose of what I wanted to accomplish, which was an authentic build. This can stand on its own as overspray on there and not really be detected if it's there and it's there it is there all right so I don't know if that's too technical for you people or whatever but that's how it goes around here let's uh, let's you know I'm gonna throw in some music I'm gonna start sanding these cabinets and we'll see how far we get today <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, let me show you a little something real quick. People always say, hey, what's this guide coat for? And I always explain it, but you know, you never know when somebody's watching something for the first time. So without the guide coat, you're not gonna see this in natural wood and you're not really even gonna see this in primer unless you got a super sharp eye. I mean, I could probably spot it if I didn't have this, but I know what I'm looking for. What I'd be looking for in that case would be texture. You know, okay, well that's a little bit different texture. But by having the guide coat on there, now it becomes very obvious. I would miss this, and this would definitely show in the decal work. So I'll sand this and sand this and sand this until I start losing my primer. If I lose too much of my primer, then I'll just stop and I know I'll have to wipe it. But I'll probably be able to sand it out. There's probably enough primer on there to do it. But that's what a guide coat is. It guides me through my sanding process to straighten this cabinet and um, make sure it's perfectly straight. There's two lowers, they're ready to go. All right, so we got the heads to prep. Believe it or not, the heads, I feel like are more work than the lowers for a lot of reasons. Just a lot more angles to get into, you know, trying to get inside of here the best you can and get around all the chocks and blocking and all the different angles and the face. And, um, you know, it's just a little bit harder. The sides of it are easier, but it's, it's all inside of here that makes it more difficult. So I typically will sand that with the, uh, the square sander and that's because this square sander can get in here a lot better and you can actually get you know square sander to fit into square shapes a lot easier believe it or not but it's not really my preferred sander uh because you know what i consider to be like a dual action sander or a da sander is my preferred tool of choice because it's have a better feel with that and i just you know, that's what I'm used to doing if I'm not going to get really technical and I'm working on metal. If I was working on metal, I'd water block it. You know, we can get in all that, but this isn't metal. This is wood. You don't want to get it wet. And um, so that DA is the way to go. And um, so I'll, I'll use that square sander and I'll hit the inside of this really well. And then I'll do the outside, much like you saw me do with, with the lower.
go get our cardio, believe it or not. full house in here do we not and I don't know how much that I put about all the stuff I was taping to the stand but what I'm trying to do I'll put these bolts down right here and these two cord covers what I'm trying to do is just pack this area that way every time it doesn't matter what I'm spraying it all gets hit this is a good way to be maximally efficient with your paint because as we know maybe from watching some of my other videos that you know, the paint that I use is very expensive and I don't want to waste any, so I can be real strategic while I'm spraying all this stuff right here. They're, none of these parts are super important. I mean, the rails, you want to get those covered, obviously that's kind of important, but they'll get covered. No, they'll, they'll be, they'll look good, you know, no matter what. But these little corner brace brackets that go in the head, they just need to be black. The bolts, we can handle those, no problem. Cord covers, things like that. So it's all, kind of strategically laid out to where we can we can hit everything without making too much effort because we want to focus on our cabinets and normally I would set those play field rails on the tr the grooves right here and kind of elevate them on the cabinet and when I spray it I'm spraying everything and that works out really good but with this one I want to have that authentic uh, overspray pattern I know we got to go down to at least here because we got something that we feel with, so We'll see how that goes. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, probably, I don't know. I guess I'll wear, I guess I'll wear the, the thing and try to do a good job. I don't know how well it'll get covered, you know, cause it's kind of hard to get down in there with it, but I don't mind wearing it. I can kind of work around it. All right, are we ready to do this? First things first. Gotta catch our bare metal.
All right, we got that done. Let's take a look at it. It's starting to kick off. It'll flatten out to a semi-gloss. And this is the cabinet that gets the, I, I will call it the HEP style paint job inside. Just all the way down, hit the chalks, only leave the, basically what I'm trying to do here is only leave the MDF and the transformer cross brace in its natural state, unpainted. Now this is the more authentic looking uh, overspray pattern and by design it gets, a, it gets a little bit heavier on the lower portion so the inside where the cash box is because that's what they do. They're trying to make sure this brace is uh, covered and then that usually just blows back this way and then it goes down usually just to about uh, the play field, we'll call them the play field stops right there that you see and that's about where it breaks and I had to go down a little bit lower than I would normally like to if I was going to do that because we had that filler there and then of course you got to do it on both sides you don't want it to be uneven but it looks good gives the gives the impression of authenticity uh, that somebody's probably looking for and the stuff's just wet and flashing off the sides are kicked off they're kind of flat this doesn't lay down as slick as like a base coat clear coat you can you could make it that slick. You could thin it and make it slick, but we really gotta worry about runs. So we'll see how this stuff looks tomorrow, but it's all painted. It was a lot. I mean, it's a lot to what people might not appreciate when they see this is how much effort it takes to place all this stuff and put it in a position where it won't just blow off of here. So many people would just put all this stuff on the stand and start spraying, and you know what's gonna happen? <laughs> thing's gonna shoot across the floor and you're gonna be picking it up and it's just gonna be it's gonna be wet paint full of dirt <laughs> it's gonna be terrible so if you're gonna really do it right you gotta you gotta anchor it down all tape is important you'll probably think that I'm wasting a lot of tape but a roll of tape is probably six or seven dollars but it's the difference in a lot of these parts bridging to the stand and you're pulling it off with a bunch of paper stuck to it or them just popping off here and they will just pop off here they won't bridge the tape that's what masking tape's about and so there we go that's that's a whole day out here a whole day and um that was pushing it on top of that